Welcome to episode six. I hope to co cover in this episode how I tried as best as possible to, to recreate mobility in my right arm and my right hand, and especially work towards eventually fine motor coordination. I had a de debilitating stroke that affected my left side of the brain and the, which means memory, basic comprehension, speech, and uh, it paralyzed the right side of my body. I have made, made several episodes explaining it and what I did to recover. <clears throat> this episode focuses on the recovery of my right hand and arm and I hope to give you some idea of how I did it. it. Took a long time to reach the level it's at. It's not like before. Believe me, it's not gonna be. Okay. Don't forget to smash the like button and particularly subscribe. Um, the idea is to give you hints and not lose you you're losing hope that recovery is gonna come it does but it's much more difficult and takes longer than you think okay so I had this major stroke and now I'm relearning classical guitar you have lost a lot if you had a stroke and unlikely to get, regain everything I focus my efforts on t two areas golf which I made a episode two back about I think it was episode four and uh, the guitar you might choose woodworking whatever you enjoyed before the stroke because it's so important to find some area that you feel accomplishment again stroke is so disheartening and humiliating I went on the internet and looked for how to recover from stroke and replay glass guitar you'll find nothing um, <clears throat> it's taken me 20 years to get to this point of relearning and I knew I, when I started, I was not going to play at the same level I used to play at. Um, you know that old saying, it's only a, uh, the baby had a face that only a mother could love, and uh, it, it now applies to my playing. That is partially why I delayed playing, relearning so long, because I could convince myself, it, I could regain the skill to play like before as long as I didn't try <laughs> and, and I realized my pieces would be focused on much slower movement of the hand let me read you the latest about spasticity does muscle spasticity ever go away asked healthline.com and I'm going to quote them. This is an article that appeared May 4th, 2021 at healthline.com. It says, to it, if un left untreated or unworked, spasticity can cause permanent shrinking and contracting of the muscles, along with joints locked into a single position. You know that stroke... Um, pose that many people have dropped, adopt of, you know, the arm is locked in place as if though it's in a sling. That's what they're talking about. While there is no cure for post stroke spasticity, treatments and in lifestyle changes can help reduce symptoms and maintain your so range of motion. 
the immediate motivation for playing was I went to a guitar concert and met a fellow named Eloy. And thanks to Eloy and Jan, who was the uh, chairman or the president of the guitar players group, they enticed me into joining the group. And at first, they did not know how bad I played. I, I expect, I think they knew. Maybe they didn't. And I constantly told them, hey, I had a stroke. But they didn't accept that. Didn't accept that excuse. Luckily, the players group was super f forgiving of these failings. Once joined, I should add also to that uh, list of characters who helped me or encouraged me was Prentice and Khan that were super kind and understanding. So I engaged in major exercises to refine my motor skills. Most exercises I did involved some form of stretching. Most stretches were of 30 seconds to 60. And if I was so inclined, uh, when I was very inclined, for, I would put it at 45, 60, when I was just trying to get through them, 30. But under 30, never. I, I heard that it's, it's just like not doing stretches at all. So to achieve full elasticity of the uh, muscle, you have to leave it at least 30 seconds or the ten and the tendon. After my stroke, my hand automatically then went to that position. And the classic way you play a class, I mean a classical guitar is this way. Your hand, that's your hand should be in that position. The first exercise I want to show you is stretching of the arm, stretching in a doorway. And basically all you're doing is basically putting your feet about two inches, one inch beyond the door jam, and then reaching up and stretching along the upper door jam and keeping your eyes, arms, keeping your arms straight as close as you can get to being straight and then push forward into the door not moving your feet and that way, that way you can cause as much tension or as little as you want and basically you do this for 30 seconds or more maybe less at first to, to get accustomed And usually I do that every day before my sessions with the gut guitar. And apparently the tendon sheath that is part of the problem of trigger finger extends, the tendons extend through the hand and then also the inflamed tendons might go up through the shoulder as far as the, as the shoulder. So therefore, that stretches the entire arm and makes the hand much more flexible. Another item I use heavily is a product brought to my attention by a friend. Um, it's a grip master, which is just practicing gripping things. And you and I did two exercises in particular. One, just straightforward gripping. And then the other, second was using pressure this way. And the fingers really got to work out. You can do it by finger by finger or as a group. And that's the way I found easy to build up my strength and my fingers. 
and also helps with trigger finger. Then another thing I found is reverse stretching, I call it, with a rubber band. Just a simple rubber band, and then you exercise like this. And therefore, you gain flexibility. And if you want it, you can have a stronger band to give you more resistance. But that's an effective way, other than just gripping exercises. Then a third way of stretching my tendons was take like my hand and then my right hand, which is the danger hand, put it in against, like when I'm playing guitar, very handy, put against the sofa or the chair in this case, and then straighten the arm out and then put pressure forward so that you're causing your fingers to bend. And that is very good additional stretching outward for the fingers, stretching the tendons or the tendon uh, sheath also, and should possibly 15 seconds. Sometimes, if, if possible, I run to 30, but if you keep your hands, uh, arm straight. Then another thing I do is put my hand on the floor, like I'm doing push-ups, and then Straighten my arm, this type of thing on the floor. Keeping your arm as straight as possible. It's amazing how much you don't realize. My left arm is my normal side, and it naturally falls into a straight arm lock position. But I realized after years, my right arm was still a little bent. Uh, I, I was like that. So that forces me into this lock position and then cause pressure against that hand and fingers. And then that causes the fingers to additionally stretch like that. Therefore, Close my fingers, causing pain, but <laughs> because now that my fingers uh, assume that position, and then adding my thumb and then squeezing for 30 seconds. Now it's much easier giving it 30. Much easier to maintain that position. Give me two minutes and my hands go back to the old position, but they maintain that position more and more of the closed fist rather than the open splayed hands. Playing, I used to focus more on my left hand and what it, it was doing so that I can basically hit the note here rather than here because my right hand used to be dependable. <laughs> now it's not. So I focus more on my right hand and I make more mistakes with my left. But hey, at least I approach playing a little. I'll, uh, this is a piece I've played for years. My first piece I learned on the classical guitar, in fact. And, it, um, <laughs> you know, I, I knew I was in trouble when I started to try to relearn how to play the guitar, and I lost it. So anyway, when you lose your first piece you ever learned, and you played constantly for years, uh, that's how much I have to rebuild. But I persevered and you 
can too. Whatever your enterprise, whether it's sewing, knitting, just do something and do it as good as us. Sort of good as before. Adelita. Don't get discouraged. You're not going to play or do anything as well on the whole as you did before your stroke. But that doesn't mean you don't have a life. And certainly that your life doesn't have value. You know, if you think of um, a famous person of any kind, the sports world, whatever, and then the time has passed and they're on the decline and um, an actress, whatever. And 10 years after they were at the height, height, their powers are not like they used to be, but they still have a value. And keep that, that in mind, you still have a value. On that positive note, I hope <laughs> I'll leave and uh, Again, smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Um, I want to continue these videos and uh, it's uh, to make sure they're worthwhile. Subscribe. Thank you very much.